What is going on everybody? It is Dylan with Asher DFS bringing you a brand new video. Today's video going over running backs to target on week two for DraftKings. So starting it off, uh, it looks like CMC is going to be out again uh, after the injury just, you know, pretty much got worse over the weekend uh, into Monday. Looks like he's out week two. Jonathan Taylor, 7,700 going against Green Bay, where we just saw Saquon Barkley have a really, really good fantasy week against Green Bay uh, in that defense. Indy was okay on the run against the Texans, but when you're facing a defense that's been for years bad against the run, I like Jonathan Taylor in this one. I think Indy's going to try to control the game a lot more, uh, not make it easy for Malik Willis in that Green Bay offense. Uh, going down after that, right, I think, you know, Brees Hall for the amount of volume he gets is worth mentioning for tournaments. I don't love it. Isaiah Pacheco, 6,900 is worth mentioning for tournaments going against a defense that Ramondre Stevenson had an amazing game against. Um, so, yeah, Isaiah Pacheco is kind of getting up there in price for his ceiling, though, which concerns me. Uh, but you get this 6K range running back area that I'm probably targeting if I'm not paying up for Jonathan Taylor. And that's Derrick Henry against Vegas, where we saw Vegas just get destroyed by J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards, the two former Baltimore running backs. Uh, now we get Derrick Henry, who I've been skeptical on this Baltimore offensive line. You kind of saw what Derrick Henry and Justice Hill were able to do against Kansas City. It was more through the air than on the ground. Um, so this will be a really good test for Baltimore's run game. So I do like Derrick Henry at 6,700 against Vegas. Uh, Jameer Gibbs going against a, a Buccaneers team to where Tampa allowed a lot of receiving yards to the running backs last week. They didn't allow a lot of rushing, but receiving, yes. So uh, Jameer Gibbs as a dual threat running back. I like him in this one at 6,600. Obviously, David Montgomery is still there, going to get some work, going to get the red zone work for the most part. But Jameer Gibbs is... Uh, receiving aspect of his game is what makes me like him in this one. And then Josh Jacobs at 6,500. This is another really solid, really good play against Indy where we just saw Indy give up 200 plus rushing yards on uh, Joe Mixon had a really good game. Green Bay had a, I'd say a better rushing game than I thought they were against Philly. Uh, but Josh Jacobs in this matchup where you just saw Indy get destroyed. Now, granted, Malik Willis is the quarterback, so maybe Indy's a lot more aggressive than they were against the Texans where you have so many threats at wide receiver and even tight end uh, to where you're trying to control that and not let deep deep balls happen, just let Stroud pick apart your defense, that the run just got way too ahead of them. So maybe they fix it in this matchup, but overall I still think it's a... Um, Good matchup for Josh Jacobs. James Conner going against the Rams uh, to where we just saw Jameer Gibbs and David Montgomery both have really good games against them. Now we get James Conner who was used so much uh, against the Bills too, which was surprising both in the receiving and on the ground looked really good. Uh, so he's another one at that price point that I like. Uh, we keep going down. Uh, I mentioned David Montgomery 6K. Um, I, I think it's worth mentioning the touchdown upside for David Montgomery in this matchup, although you still get someone like Vita Vea there on that defensive line. Uh, but Tony Pollard at 5,900 is another target. Now, yes, Tennessee's offensive line and offense isn't as difficult as San Francisco's, but they ran the ball, especially Tony Pollard, ran the ball all over the Bears' defense, was able to get 18 DraftKings points, now goes and faces a Jets team that just got destroyed by Jordan Mason. So I think it's a good matchup for Tony Pollard. If you're looking for someone in that high 5k range of running back, um, Jerome Ford's another name worth mentioning 5,900. Obviously you look at his, uh, his matchup against Dallas, only 12 carries for 44 yards, uh, but got used a lot in the receiving game, which kind of, uh, balanced that out in this one. I think Cleveland has a huge advantage in the run game. So Jerome Ford at 5,900 is definitely worth a play. Zach Charbonnet is worth mentioning if Ken Walker's out, but he's way, in my opinion, Zach Charbonnet should not be 5,800 
against New England if Ken Walker's out, right? He should be a mid to low 5K, but he's priced there, so... Yeah, Brian Robinson Jr., another name at 5,800 to where we just saw Aaron Jones have an, uh, another really good game. Granted, the Vikings got out to a good lead, but pace-wise, it was pretty similar. Uh, plus, Brian Robinson was used in the receiving game, like I mentioned, uh, 89 total yards for him. But getting three receptions um, is definitely that. Plus, the goal line work got that touchdown, so... Uh, Brian Robinson, another name worth mentioning. And then even Devin Singletary. I mentioned the Giants and, and how I like them this week. Devin Singletary against Washington to where you saw Rashard White kind of beat him in the receiving game. Bucky Irving beat him on the ground. Devin Singletary, they're they're hoping to use him in you know both a dual threat running back. I don't know if he's there, but... I still think it is a really good matchup for him. Uh, continuing to go down, Najee Harris is, is uh, definitely worth mentioning. Uh, last week, 20 carries, only 70 yards, but it was against an Atlanta defense. This is a uh, Denver defense to where Ken Walker just got over 100 yards. Zach Charbonnet had a really good game, and we saw Najee get a majority of the rushing attempts. Uh, I mean, you could look at uh, Warren, two for seven. Granted, he was questionable. Cordell Patterson got a couple carries, but Najee at 5,500 is a really good value. But 5,400, J.K. Dobbins is the guy to target right now. Uh, granted, only 10 rushing attempts, but he got 135 yards ahead, a huge rush, got used in the receiving check down game there, and gets you 25 uh, DK points. I mean, you look at Gus Edwards, 11 for 26. Struggled in that game, uh, but J.K. Dobbins really stood out, so kind of targeting him there. Uh, Chuba Hubbard, I, I would say, is worth mentioning, but we really didn't get to see the run game at all for Carolina because they were down quick, and they were down by a lot, so um, that, that's one that's concerning. But Justice Hill at 5,200 is another name to watch for. I mentioned I like Derrick Henry. But for what Justice Hill did against Kansas City, you know, had him in my my showdown lineups. I, I like Justice Hill, uh, six for fifty-two, uh, and that's all receiving work, right? Derrick Henry got majority of the work, or Lamar ran. So Justice Hill, I think in this matchup is definitely worth going after. But if we're talking cash, right, we get Jordan Mason again, fifty-two hundred against Minnesota. I mentioned Minnesota got off to a big lead. They were passing a lot, uh, or uh, the Giants, sorry. Minnesota got off to a big lead against the Giants. The Giants were trying to pass a lot. Uh, in this one, we saw San Fran struggle against Minnesota last year. Got knocked off. Uh, Jordan Mason, 28 carries. I, I like the backups for San Fran. I, I mentioned um, Jordan Mason probably wouldn't get this much work. Uh, Shanahan said differently. Uh, he said Jordan Mason is going to get all of the work. Uh, 28 carries for 147 yards. 5.3 against, in my opinion, a Jets team that's good defensively. I, I mentioned they're a, a top 10 defense to me. Their run game, I did mention also, was their weakest point. San Fran attacked that quite a bit. Uh, the Jets pretty much held San Fran down uh, for the most part in that first half in the past game. So Jordan Mason at 5,200, though, is probably a chalk running back. He's got to be for his price point and his opportunity. So uh, that's definitely one where we're probably most of us are going to play. So uh, that's it as far as cheap running backs. Um, you know, Tank Bigsby got some work, but it's a bad matchup. Tajay Spears is worth mentioning. But I still, like I said, I still think the Jets defense is good. Um, and then that's that's it, right? I, in my opinion, if you're playing cash, you're going Jordan Mason, right? You're you're putting Mason here, getting some money, and then you could target, you know, say Jonathan Taylor, or you could target uh, uh, Josh Jacobs, right? Uh, James Conner. You you target any of these guys, and that's not bad. You're paying eleven six for two running backs if you can do Mason and Conner and somebody else. So um, even Dobbins, like Dobbins, I mentioned at fifty five hundred. I don't think it's a bad week to go three running backs. I really don't. 
I, I think there's some good games out here. But as far as three running backs, I don't think it's bad at all. So hope you guys did enjoy the video. I will have the wide receiver video going out tomorrow and the tight end video going out on Friday. So if you guys are interested in that, check those videos out. I just did the showdown video earlier today uh, for the Bills Dolphins game. So if you guys are looking for that, just posted a little earlier. So go check that out. And I will see you guys in the next one.